Here are five steps that I follow religiously when working with a floor plan in Morfolio Trace. It will guarantee your file is set up correctly, you're drawing to the correct scale, so you can export and share your work with others without a hiccup. I will also share with you a pro tip that's easily missed by beginners at the end. By the way, if you are interested in seeing more of my design process on Lightpath, I have a free three-part workshop that you can sign up for today. The workshop are perfect if you are considering moving to a digital workflow that will save you time, allow you to work smarter and faster, and free you from a traditional office environment. I'll show you real-world examples with different applications on how I use my iPad for architectural and interior design work. You can click this link above or find it in the video description below. This is going to be very helpful. Let's say if you're working with a existing as-built drawing of a house, just say the house is kind of there, it's not a ground up, but you do have this as-built drawing that you hired a as-built vendor to perform. So when you bring this in, the first thing you want to do is to calibrate your drawing. So by calibrating your drawing, this ensures you are drawing to a one-to-one -one scale, almost like you're drawing in a one-to-one -one scale in AutoCAD. And one of the things I'm looking for is just a measurement that I can use to calibrate my drawing with. So I'm hunting these measurements around the house and I'm looking for something that's fairly big, like this living room dimension. So if there's not an overall dimension for the building, I'll look for a room size dimension that's the biggest. And that's going to allow me to calibrate my drawing better than having to calibrate using a small bathroom or a door. So let's go ahead and turn on our calibration tool. And then we're going to go set this scale to the scale of our drawing. So we can be drawing to a one to one scale. So now I'm going to take this X on one end and then on the other end, I'm also going to make sure that they are as parallel as possible. So you can zoom in to really make sure that these points are really right on. So I can I can tell from from the as built dimension that from this distance, distance on the wall to this distance on the wall, it's 22 feet and two inches. So that's going to be our unit. So I'm going to hit 22 feet and two inches. And I'm going to click on this green mark. And just to make sure that this is calibrated correctly, I'm going to select my super skill ruler. And from one end to the other end, we can tell that it is exactly 22 feet and two inches. So now when I'm drawing, this is going to ensure that I'm drawing one to one with a one to one scale using this super scale ruler. The next thing that's going to be helpful for me is when I'm not using the ruler to count exactly how big something is like a couch or a piece of bathroom or plumbing fixture. What I love to do is to enable the grid size. So by clicking on this grid, what this is going to allow me to do is to sit to set the grid to a certain unit. So you can see that this grid right now is set to about three feet and 12 inches. That's about four foot grid, which really isn't very helpful with uh, space planning like this in maybe in other scenarios with a bigger project that might be. But for the sake of a residential design, what I'm going to do is actually just to make sure the grid is either six inches or a foot. I personally find one foot grid the most useful. So by hitting one foot and zero inches, that's going to allow me to readjust the grid size to that dimension. So if I'm if I'm drawing like a piece of couch, I know it's about three feet by seven feet. I can easily count the number of squares on the page without using the super scale ruler, which you have to turn on and off. So this grid is a visual guide to help you draw things in scale. Now you can either have this square grid or you can have this you know, little grid, which I don't think is very helpful for anyone, or you can have a dotted system. This dotted system might be nice because it's not as visually obtrusive. Now you can also change the color of the grid. So let's say if I want my grid to be a, a red color, and this might be more useful for you to just always have it turned on as an underlay. Now I can actually choose to vary my opacity. So I think this actually might be helpful. So I'm going to leave it here and hit OK. So with this grid all set up and in combination with a super scale ruler, this is going to allow you to draw things very fast to scale with a very high level of precision. 
that you may not have with other apps. So if I am drawing something that requires a lot of precision, I'll have the super scale ruler turned on and I'll actually zero in for you know the inches down to the inches. But if I'm just drawing a piece of furniture, I may just have it turned off and I'll use the grid as a visual guide to determine how big a table is or a chair is or a piece of rug. So that's just a faster way to do things. Now I'm actually gonna flip through my drawing and show you the kind of the process of how I built this up layer by layer. But before I do that, I actually think the grid right now is a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do right now is either turn it off or I could either adjust the opacity setting to make it even a little bit more faint. So now when I zoom in, it's in the background, it's not as in my face. And the layer above here are really built up into different things. So there's the part for the stairs, there's a part for the kitchen and other rooms. The reason for that is I can turn them on and off if I wanted to change something separate from another or to mix and match different options. So based on these layers, you can see this is all the ideas for this first floor where you come into the dining room and the office and a new kitchen layout. Now with this layout, you could either export this. So imagine if you are done with the design and you're ready to export this drawing, you wanna just go ahead and hit export. And I imagine you wanted to export to scale because everything you've done in Morfolio Trace have been to scale. So I'm gonna select my PDF as a file type and for the best quality, and I'm gonna click continue. I wanna go ahead and click on this first tab. And this first tab is going to allow you a couple of options. You can see you can either export all these different layers as a individual PDF, or you can just have everything be exported with the background the aspect drawing as their underlay. And that's mostly what I'm gonna be using this for. So I am going to manually turn these other layers off. Now there might be an occasion where you want to export all your layers, but for now, I just want to have a very faint background of my asphalt layer and my new ideas and red lines on top of that so that I can see where things have been changed. And since my original asphalt drawing was done on the 24 by 36 inch paper, I'm gonna make that the same. And the scale is quarter inch. That's also the same scale as the asphalt drawing. The borderless is turned on and the layers are also turned on so you can see the layers behind. And now if I just hit export, this is going to allow me to export to my MacBook, AirDrop, or you can send it to yourself as an email or text it to somebody else. Now, another feature that I find helpful with Mofolio Trace is when you bring in a drawing like this, at the full scale RFD paper size. And when you zoom in, you'll see that your lines are not as sharp as they could be. What you could do is you can take your canvas and zoom in to about this area and then create a new trace paper on top. And this new trace layer is going to live just around the edges of where your previous view was. But if you want to create a much more detailed drawing with more clean and crispy lines, you can do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that if I'm drawing on this layer now, you can see your lines are no longer pixelated. Then that's because you have just created this new zoomed in layer that's focused on this bathroom area. So that is sort of a, you know, limitation, I think with Morfolio, hopefully they will have a different solution in the future. But for now, a lot of people have complained when they have a drawing that's at this scale, when you zoom in, it's gonna look pixelated and that's just the software itself. But if you want to get a crispy line, make sure you zoom into that area and you're drawing to that area by itself. So let's go ahead and just do a couple more lines. And let's say if this is the bathroom layout that I'm trying to export, what I can now do is do the same thing with the export PDF. In this tab right here, I could select to have my layers show in the background and I can actually set the size of the paper manually again. So I'm gonna select print size in the same 24 by 36 and hit okay. And then I'm going to select my print scale 
So here I have a lot of options. Let's go ahead and try the half an inch uh, from the quarter inch. So the half an inch on the RFD size is actually still pretty small. So you can really blow this up to, to an inch scale. And this is going to allow your lines not to look super pixelated in the export. And you don't have to export this layer. If this is all you want to export in the PDF, you can do that. Hopefully this clarifies some of your challenges. So to recap, one, calibrate your drawing, two, turn on grid size, three, use the super scale ruler, four, create a zoomed in canvas for trace, and five, export to PDF. Please let me know which is your favorite tip.